Spring is a time to look to the future. In this case, by celebrating, honoring, and remembering those who have come before us and who have made the world a better place. This exhibition presents the work of established and emerging Milwaukee area artists. The works range from the highly personal to reflections encompassing historical and ancestral themes. Float, number four and number 17. My ancestors, who immigrated to this country in the late 1800s and early 1900s, arrived by water. They traveled from Yamaguchi, Ahime, Kumamoto, and Aomori prefectures in Japan, and arrived by ship in Seattle, San Francisco, and Honolulu. In the series Float, I photographed Japanese glass floats, which have also made their way across the Pacific Ocean. In the early 1900s, Japanese fishermen began using these glass balls to buoy their fishing nets. When they broke free from the rope nets, many found their way into the Kuroshio Current, which sent them in a large circular ocean route, passing by the coasts of Alaska, the Pacific Northwest, California, and the Hawaiian Islands. Only when a storm altered their path would they end up washed ashore on beaches. The floats were hand-blown with inexpensive glass, usually melted-down sake bottles, which accounts for their green and blue color. Each is a unique object, something like a fingerprint, with individual shapes, patterns, and air bubbles and circular closures. I see these floats as a way of thinking about those who came before me and about larger issues of migration, permanence, tenacity, and the paths that lead us from one place to another. Remember, New American Pin. In the aftermath of December 7, 1941, Remember Pearl Harbor became a popular phrase, printed on all manner of souvenir items. It reinforced love of country and was used to rally support for troops, the sale of war bonds, and military enlistment. When directed at Asian Americans, the same phrase created fear and implied complicity. The bombing of Pearl Harbor led to the signing of Executive Order 9066, allowing for the incarceration of 120,000 Japanese Americans, two-thirds of whom were U.S. citizens. This artwork is not meant to minimize the patriotism of veterans or the memory of the service personnel or civilians who died at Pearl Harbor. Indeed, members of my own family both served in the U.S. Army during World War II and were Hawaii-born residents during the Japanese attack. New American Pin, created in 2020, allows for the idea that American sacrifice has taken many forms in our history, including the patriotism and suffering of indigenous, black, and brown Americans. We can remember or forget things we are proud of, as well as things we are ashamed of. What do you choose to remember? To pay homage. To pay homage is to honor, show respect, gratitude, and reverence to one's ancestors and honoring their memory. Family members who influenced us directly or those who were born too far in the past for us to have ever known are a part of us. Their actions, beliefs, and accomplishments move through the ages to inform and teach us about our past and help us to make choices about who we are and what we value. Remembering is different from honoring. We remember the positive and negative that we know about those who preceded us. 
we honor the positive things that we know or were taught. I pay homage to those in the images I have chosen to share with you. Know that they were chosen for both the positive and negative influences the subjects had on those behind the portraits. Farewell, and my father's hand. My father filled a page every morning with a handwritten chant. He left behind close to 30 books of various thicknesses, completely covered with his writing. Till his last day, he had the most beautiful penmanship. Most importantly, he used the act of writing and the duration that it takes to fill a page as a space to meditate. For many decades, I was fascinated by this, and we had many conversations when he was alive about the many ways in which his work is very similar to my own visual art practice. Over the years, I made several works using scans of his written pages to make collages, sculptures, videos, and prints. Farewell is my final collaboration with his written meditation practice. It is a work that is about letting go with grace, releasing him back to the nature he came from by using a childhood memory of making paper boats. When a person becomes a picture, when a person becomes a picture, I stare at you still through jasmine flowers, rose crowns, and a fog of incense. People ask you if you want coffee or tiffin. Phones ring and ping and vibrate incessantly. The body of frozen shell hovers on a stretcher of bamboo, coconut leaves, jute rope, dressed in oil and holy water flowers, rice, and sandalwood paste, while a menu is discussed for 50 people. The body becomes food in the belly of a furnace, while crows become honored guests. Sharp invited beaks tear into plantain leaves and eggplant. In return, coins become blessings for thirsty hands. Lists of vegetables, fruits, flowers, grain, made on scraps by many hands, disappear into pockets to be found later. Money pressed into palms, smells of the residue of guilt. Black sesame, dharba grass, water, balls of steaming white rice suddenly becomes food for a spirit. Bags of fruit and snacks, heaped stand-ins for comfort for the living. Donations debated and mementos bought, chanting and prayers said for a soul's treacherous journey, obligatory recitations out of mouths bounce off the walls and settle like the thin layer of dust on the bureau and the coffee table. And the whole time floating is the keening of a story looping and echoing of how a person became a picture. Wrapping air in cloth. Five feet, 11 inches once, I've watched you shrink, needing to bend my head so your lips can reach my forehead for a mustached kiss. My hand in yours became your hand in mine, fingers dispersing like grains of sand on a sunny beach. Where you sat watching, us dipping our feet in new horizons, and then you were gone, your departure, a breach, a tear, a crack, revealing truth that we are all simply bellows, living with each inhale, 
dying with each exhale, and in between, wrapping air in cloth. Alchemy Altar, Conjuring the Divine Ancestral Feminine by Portia Cobb. This work is an assemblage of objects found, claimed, and of my creation to conjure the spirits of my matrilineal line, the women whose blood and DNA I share. It is an homage to their survival through memory, imagery, and stories we hold of them. I am an interdisciplinary artist, deeply interested in themes that reveal the double consciousness of Black diasporic identities, memory, and forced forgetting. And joining these elements to digital photography, video, site-specific performance, and ephemeral installation. My work often interrogates a condition of my own two-ness, further complicated by the knowledge of my creolized Gullah Geechee maternal heritage. Returns to my family's homestead within the interiors of Low Country, South Carolina, and to far-flung sites of spiritual homes across the Black Atlantic have greatly inspired and elevated my practice. My installations configure chance arrangements of harvested materials, my own hair, Spanish moss, oyster shells, dried okra, rice, prayer beads, and other elements as embodiments of old world matrilineal memory and new world myth making. In my current and developing creative work and research, I am finding inspiration in domestic and ephemeral ceremonial rituals, sacred spaces, and seeking traditions as a continuum of African spiritual practices across the far-flung Black diaspora. On my altar is a photograph of my great aunt, my grandmother, and possibly my mother and a female cousin shown in 1930s South Carolina. Also, you will find my hoodoo hat with Spanish moss and my own hair, rice, bullseye beads, and prayer necklaces from Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. A blue wine bottle, Charleston palmetto roses, Florida water, and copies of family archival photographs. Homage is not about loss to me, but about remembering and understanding and honoring, uh, recognizing someone or something that's influenced us and contemplating how they lived and how they impacted others. The assemblage boxes and homage were created while pondering my relationship with and the life of my own father, Edward Osborne. Uh, he was an architect who loved to work with his hands also loved order and quietude, but as he had five children, order and quietude were rarely an option, always a goal. He encouraged me to follow my passions and pursue a career in the arts, which I did. Um, and my father had a tragically short life that was plagued with deep depression and, and anxiety, and he clung to his lifelong beliefs in Christian science, which was a religion that focused on the spiritual aspects of our existence having greater power than the material or corporeal aspects of our lives. Now, because of his religious beliefs, he did not seek medical help either for his depression or when he became gravely ill. So in, in these works, I contemplate aspects of his life, his beliefs, his profession, the loss of him in my life, and the changing nature of masculinity from his generation to my own. Um, the process of making the works really, uh, to me, 
helped me to honor his life and also recognize its impact on, on all of us. Being raised in Christian science myself, but leaving the church when I reached adulthood, I've often pondered um, those beliefs that were a cornerstone of my upbringing and certainly a cornerstone of his life. And I've worked to reconcile that with my own beliefs and views as an adult. Um, this is something that often plays into my work. Seven, which is the title of one of the boxes, refers to seven people in our family, but also seven as a powerful number in many different belief systems. Um, the number seven is a visual element in the work, amongst other elements, and, and marks that different, definitely marks that reference my dad. Uh, his carpenter's pencil from his basement wood shop is actually in the piece. Linear graphic marks that look like drafting lines of an architect are th played throughout the work. The second piece, Infinity from a Corporeal Perspective, uh, with a subtitle as The Disappearing Y Chromosome, uh, explores ideas of spirituality, which in my upbringing was often referred to as infinite uh, versus the corporeal or physical aspects of our lives, which uh, was thought to be much lesser, lesser in power. The subtitle refers to a program that I heard on public radio while working in my studio that uh, was a scientist talking about the phenomenon of the disappearing Y chromosome in, in humankind. And scientists believe that this will dramatically impact humanity in the future. I was likening that phenomenon to my father and his father before him who definitely put up a strong 1950s and even 1930s um, strong macho male front versus the next generation of men, uh, my brothers, who have, have more options and can feel more comfortable with, a, with a, a, a healthier, more dimensional and equitable life with their spouses and their kids. Interestingly, um, Joseph Cornell, who's probably the most famous assemblage artist, uh, who was also very influential uh, to me in my work, was also raised Christian scientist. And, and I learned this fact only recently. Uh, his imagery in his work often alludes to some of the mysticism and the ponderings of that faith, that notion of spirituality, of infinitude, and, and of the less tangible aspects of our existence. 